In 1895, an incredible discovery was made, leading to one of the most revolutionary pieces of medical equipment ever created. German engineer Wilhelm Röntgen created the first iteration of the X-ray machine, but the fascinating discovery would capture the interest of the masses, with many wanting to see inside themselves in a way previously thought impossible. But many who were intrigued by the technology were left unaware at just how dangerous the levels of radiation they were consuming were from their, at times, daily x-ray hobbying. This was the x-ray craze of 1896, so strap on a lead vest as we learn something new. Rentgen's scientific career was one filled with setbacks and difficulties. As a young student in Holland, he was expelled from school for a prank committed by another student. His lack of a diploma initially prevented him from getting a job at the University of Würzburg, even after he received his doctorate, although he was eventually accepted. His experiments at Würzburg focused on light phenomena and other emissions generated by discharging electrical currents in the vacuum of glass bulbs with positive and negative electrodes, which display a fluorescent glow when a high voltage current is passed through it. He was particularly interested in cathode rays and in assessing their range outside of charged tubes. While working with a cathode ray tube in his laboratory, Röntgen observed a fluorescent glow of crystals on a table near his tube. Röntgen shielded the tube with heavy black cardboard and discovered a green-colored fluorescent light generated by a material located a few feet away from the tube. He concluded that a new type of ray was being emitted from the cathode ray tube. This ray was capable of passing through the heavy cardboard covering it and exciting the phosphorescent materials in the room. He found that the new ray could pass through most substances, casting shadows of solid objects. Röntgen also discovered that the ray could pass through the tissue of humans, but not bones and metal objects. At this time, Anna Bertha Röntgen, Wilhelm's wife, noticed that he was spending exorbitant amounts of time in his lab. She would bring him meals when he was unable to take the time to come and get food himself and try to offer her support and assistance when she could. This included when he needed someone to test out his new invention on, leading to one of Röntgen's most famous images, helping him win the first Nobel Prize in Physics in 1901. The picture of his wife's hand was unlike anything ever taken before. It was the first radiograph, a picture exposed by x-rays instead of visible light. It was an image that sparked a craze for the invisible rays that could illuminate the inner workings of the human body, and it catapulted Wilhelm Röntgen to worldwide fame. Although Anna herself wasn't too thrilled at the sight of the picture, allegedly proclaiming that she had seen her death and never setting foot in her husband's lab again. But Wilhelm wasn't deterred by this. If anything, it invigorated his excitement as to the possibilities of this new discovery deciding not to patent it so that it might be more quickly implemented into various medical applications. And it didn't take long. Within weeks of Röntgen's announcement, European surgeons began using x-rays to find bullets and other foreign substances in human bodies. By the following year, an x-ray department had been set up at the Glasgow Royal Infirmary, and x-rays were being used clinically in the United States to diagnose bone fractures and gunshot wounds. But it wasn't just scientists and doctors becoming interested the public as a whole quickly became obsessed with the technology. The x-ray machines soon became widely available, and portrait studios opened to take bone portraits, further fueling public interest and imagination. Poems about x-rays appeared in popular journals, and the metaphorical use of the rays popped up in political cartoons, short stories, and advertising. Private detectives claimed to use x-ray devices to follow unfaithful spouses, and some sold lead underwear to foil attempts at peeking with x-ray glasses, which didn't exist. Even some would have x-ray machines set up in their homes, so that they might be able to take pictures whenever they wished. What wasn't known to many, however, was just how much radiation they were taking in from the machines, especially since the dosage from the earlier x-rays tended to be much higher than our modern medical equipment. At the beginning of their popularity, many believed that an x-ray passing through your body was no more harmful than typical light. But as more and more people used them, devastating results would begin to appear. A man who tried to do a 10-hour exposure on his wife's broken hip found that she had developed burns on her skin. Some found that they had extreme blistering of their skin and hair loss from their excessive use. Clarence Dolly, x-ray technician in Thomas Edison's lab, was exposed to such high levels of radiation that he had to have both arms amputated, later dying of skin cancer at the age of 39. 
That's why the x-ray craze was a fleeting one, dying off in the general public as quickly as it had begun. That is, except for one instance, shoe stores. In an effort to drum up more business, many shoe stores began to use x-ray machines. The shoe stores would use scientific rhetoric to sell people on more expensive shoes. Dr. Jacob J. Lowe, who held a patent from 1927 for a shoe-fitting fluoroscopy device, was quoted as saying, A shoe merchant can positively assure his customers that they never need to wear ill-fitting boots or shoes, that parents can visually assure themselves as to whether they are buying shoes for their boys and girls which will not injure and deform the sensitive bone joints. Essentially, it was a gimmick a marketing tactic used to get people to buy more shoes. But the radiation risks had been known since the turn of the century. Plus, irregular maintenance, regularity of use, and limited design improvements, such as timers, meant that the danger to workers and consumers was very real. In 1957, an issue from the British Medical Journal highlighted a patient who had severe pain and skin damage on her right leg and foot. She had been working in a shoe shop for 10 years, using the machine between 15 and 20 times a day, giving her large doses of radiation, particularly on her right side, which was closest to the opening for the customer's foot. Even as late as 1947, there was said to be about 300 of the machines in use throughout New York. But it wasn't until 1957 that Pennsylvania became the first state to ban their use. X-rays would continue to be improved, with machines putting out as little radiation as possible needed to get a clear picture, while the doctors and technicians that operated them on a regular basis were able to use cover to shield themselves from a regular dose of radiation. In the end, X-ray machines proved to be an extraordinarily valuable invention that many tried to use before they fully understood what it was capable of. Thanks for watching! If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It really helps the channel to grow and allows me to continue making the videos you want to see. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next one.